after a very very brief stint with the corporate sector both in the hotels and in the in the banking sector i moved to media i was doing uh, documentaries i am still doing documentaries and my understanding of india and of nature and a whole lot of other things and the interconnectivity between the humans the natural world and our happiness and development everything you know all these things happened in the last 20 years for me ever since i started doing my documentary field work i had interacted with uh, people especially my learnings have happened a lot from the uh, the so called uh, backward people you know the tribal people whom we call adivasis is the right word because they are the original people of the earth the original inhabitants of this earth so there's so much that we can learn from them and uh, simultaneously my my work has uh, also got me an understanding that living with nature and being close to the land is the way forward for all of us i mean i feel that that is the way forward for all of us so in the last 10 years i i mean i never had a land for myself so i had to search and after searching for a few years i managed to get some land 10 years ago and i've been working on the land it has been a great learning experience and i want to say this that please excuse my phone because there's some problem with the camera so you can't see my face much uh, clearly uh, so the learning uh, i had i mean i was i had no doubt about what kind of farming i was going to do i wanted to do natural farming there were a lot of things like organic natural chemical farming etc etc but because i had done a lot of documentary work already on the farmers issues on agriculture uh and also on organic farming natural farming whichever name you want to call that so i was definitely when i start when i started farming what i wanted to do was natural farming there was i mean organic whatever you want to give the name to that and uh, my other journey has been the health journey because i used to be an extremely sick sickly teenager and uh, somewhere down the line around quite year, uh, early on in my life i was fortunate because of my extreme sickness i discovered naturopathy i discovered naturopathy by accident but after having gone through my treatments in natural nature cure i have learned how one stays healthy even in cases of uh, you know when you have an infection or whatever so i want to talk about that today uh how do we stay healthy because today uh, you know uh, we are being fed fear day in and day out in the mainstream media every day we are being told that we have to be uh, afraid or oh, you know corona ho jayega so uh, in that context i definitely want to speak certain things uh, first of all i want to share a small anecdote you know i don't know which tribe it is but it is a tribe in india when they want to cut a tree they don't cut the tree you know they they all go around i think this is a uh, thing that many people are aware of if you are not i still want to share that they go daily surround the tree all of them and every day they go on giving uh, galis to the tree you know like they keep saying something negative that you are this you are that you die you do this you do that and what they have noticed what they find is after a few days the tree actually dies why am i saying this that we are all biological beings and we are also energy beings and our energies are all connected to the universal energy and the more negative stuff goes into us our bodies also react the same way because we are made of water we are made of all the five elements of the universe and that is how our bodies uh scientific terms that's what they call and uh, uh i remember sometime in 2003 i was uh, making a video about women's health uh one midwife an old lady from nizamabad she's a totally so called illiterate lady uh she said in a very simple one sentence in telugu you, they say she said em naita demo em naita demo ante nijane em naita so simple she said when you
cancer. The thing that even in uh, patients suffering from cancer, the thing that they notice is those who are with positive thinking, positive thoughts are the ones who survive even a deadly uh, uh, ailment like cancer. So I want to, I think you're recording now. So I'll repeat this sentence, uh, this story of the tree. You know, there is a tribe in India when they want to cut down the tree, they don't go and cut the tree. What they do is they surround the tree every day and they go on giving galis or, you know, scoldings to the tree that you are this, you are that, you're bad, you're this, you're only worth dying, etc., etc. And after a few days or I don't know, a couple of weeks, actually, even if it's a huge tree, it falls down and it dies. And as a natural farmer, I want to give my experience that I have been growing trees <coughs> I have been growing trees on my farm and uh, I have been not using things like, I mean, I don't have water. I'm a dry land farmer and uh, I was all the time worried. Okay. If I don't water, if I don't put, because you know, in organic farming also, there is this full stress that, Oh, you should put panchagavya, You should put this, you should put that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I used to be worried because I am alone. I don't have enough farm hands to help me and there were all kinds of constraints. So I said, okay, this is the constraint that 70% of the farmers in India have. That is, they don't have water. So how do I deal with this? What I did was I started using, what is a manure that I have? I don't have uh, animals and lugging so much manure from somewhere else is very difficult. So all I did was, okay, I have the weeds, I have the uh, crops, whatever I grow. And every time I would put back the, the greens back into the soil. And over a period of time, my soil has rejuvenated. And today I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, do any kind of uh, manuring because earthworms have grown so much and I was guided in this by uh, uh, Sri Bhaskar Saviji who's no more right now one of the pioneering nat natural farmers who told me that yes what you're doing is right because you're giving tons and tons of uh, green manure to the far uh, to the soil and over a period of time it will definitely improve the soil condition and the first principle of growing things naturally and disease free is again nutrition nutrition to the soil when you're giving good nutrition to the soil you grow healthy plants and healthy plants will be able to withstand all kinds of diseases whatever they may be and uh, so far uh, of course, there may be some that might die, you know, uh, those, are, those are those which whose condition may not be the right condition. But I had uh, success in growing all kinds of species on the farm. And another thing I want to say here is the importance of biodiversity for the farm's health. That is when you are mixing crops, mixing all kinds of different species, automatically they support each other, like it happens in the forest. Nobody goes and sprays any kind of uh, uh, organic spray or pesticide or anything, and you get the best food that you get is the forest food. It's the healthiest food because you're, there is no intervention from the humankind. So how do, we, how do I relate that to my own health? Whether it is a plant or whether it is a human being, we are all part of nature. We are all made as biological beings, right? So what is a, a thing that we need to do? What do they teach? In our ancient times, what they did was they gave breast milk was the only vaccination that the child had. And then, uh, of course, eating the right food at the right time and keeping your body toxin free. That is very important. And I want to stress on this, that in naturopathy, they talk about fasting as the best way to stay healthy. Like if you're sick, the best thing to do is you fast, take a liquid diet, like mostly juices, fruits, especially are the um, whole foods, you know, and they help you in detoxing the body. And automatically your body has the capacity to regain health. You know, we all seem to think that we know a lot. We don't. The nature knows a lot more than us. And uh, my own experience has been that, well, I'll give you a simple example. Uh, I was living in Punjab some three, four years ago, and I ate something somewhere, and I had a food poisoning. And by the time I reached from Batinda to Chandigarh, I had like, I mean, it was diarrhea like anything. I must have gone like 20 or 
I don't know how many times, 20 plus times in 24 hours to the toilet and vomitings, both extreme diarrhea it was. And because I had the inherent knowledge about naturopathy, all I did was I didn't take any medication to stop my diarrhea. I just let it flow because I knew that my body was trying to send out whatever that was not good for my body out. Okay, so all I did was I fasted. I just took some pomegranate juice because pomegranate juice is very good in cases of diarrhea and maybe some musk melon. I was able to eat some that that fruit. That's all I had taking a lot of water and put a cold pack, you know, the cold uh, towel uh, dripped in water. You just put it on your stomach. It takes out also uh, takes out the toxins from the stomach. And after the second day, I was I had to travel from Chandigarh to Delhi and I had a bus ride. I was fine. I still continued fasting because I didn't want to have any issues. And it was on the third day that I actually took a proper meal. And let me tell you that when we fast, our body gets the rest it requires and it automatically comes back to normalcy on its own. It heals on its own. If somebody is aware in Telugu and in Sanskrit, I don't know about uh, other languages, but my mom used to say something called uh, Lankhanam Paramaushadam. Lankhanam is basically fasting. So when the pot, if you look at animals also, I was observing like whether it is uh, uh, dogs, even the carnivorous animals like uh, tigers, they go on a fast. When they are sick, all they do is they just fast. They don't do anything. They may be even eating grass because you know, the plant, the raw plants, they give uh, the fiber for the body to detox. So I, I had made a documentary two years ago on naturopathy. Uh, it is there on my YouTube channel. Please watch it. I had interviewed people who got out of cancer, who got out of serious heart ailments, simply by following the diet and lifestyle. Why am I saying all this? Because uh, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Narayana, he had he was a mining engineer and way back somewhere in the 60s he had he was around 40 years old that time 38 i think he was uh, he was affected with lung cancer because you know when you do mining jobs you're taking in all the dust into your lungs the fine dust and it causes silicosis so uh, so he was told in Velour, Velour Hospital that, you know, there is a Velour, uh, you all are aware of this hospital or, and quite a few other places he said that we can't help you. You're in third stage cancer. You're going to die. Four days he was able to beat through his nose, who's a naturopath. And his concept is that one raw meal, so if you're not eating cooked food after lunch, let's say like your last food, you eat a breakfast and you eat a lunch, and after that, don't eat a cooked food, maybe have a fruit fruit meal for a dinner uh, and uh, then again dinner should never be after seven because our circadian rhythms tell us that uh, you eat before dusk before the sun sets you know our people used to do that mm -hmm. all our elders did that now because of the electricity we have all started eating like around uh, yeah, i don't know nine ten and in fact i also started this eating before seven only three three years ago, not before that, even I was not aware. And believe me, it made so much difference to my health. And now since last one year, I've been eating only uh, raw diet for the, for the dinner. So you get an intermittent fasting time of almost like 17 hours on a daily basis, which actually gives you a lot more energy, a lot more health and keeps your body in a in a good system and uh, definitely i don't recommend i mean naturopathy definitely says you know preferably have a vegetarian diet and if you must want to if you do want to eat meat then maybe uh, space it out you know don't make it like um, ever since i have become a fully vegetarian i noticed that if at some time if i do eat anything uh, of animal origin uh, then I, I, I can notice the changes in my body. Yeah.
So the first cardinal rule is we need to observe our bodies, what's happening to them, what we're putting into the body, and then what is the reaction that is happening. And uh, the second issue of staying healthy uh, is uh, we are not following the natural rhythms. That's the first problem why so many people are sick today. And the second thing is we are all closing ourselves inside air conditioning rooms or air conditioned cars. You know what's happening? We are not sweating. And sweating is one of the most important mechanisms of detoxifying. In fact, if you go to a naturopathy hospital, they'll put you in a sauna. They'll put you in a steam room so that you can sweat, you know? So uh, if you can let the sweat come every day, then your body is doing its functions daily. So what we need to understand is everything had a purpose. You know, the nature had put everything for a purpose where why we are sweating and why we are vomiting or why there is a diarrhea, why there is a cough. Unfortunately, in allopathy, they give you a suppressing drug. They give you a drug to suppress the diarrhea. They give you a drug to suppress the fever. They give you a drug to suppress the vomitings. So what happens is all that stuff is staying inside your body. It's not coming out. It goes back into your blood. It goes back into your system, which results in a chronic disease later on. So I think uh, we need to allow uh, the body to function in its normal way, the way nature has designed it to happen. And uh, there are many things that we can talk about, including the kind of toilets that we use. You know, if you look at it traditionally, or uh, how do I say, uh, since our ancestral time, the way human beings were going to the toilet was the Indian style. Now we got this Western one. Now that's again another big disaster, both uh, from the environmental point of view because we use too much water, and then from the uh, from the uh, mechanism of uh, you know letting your stomach empty. Of course, it might work for some people, but in general, uh, again uh, that has been our observations by naturopaths and other people. So uh, these are some of the basic stuff. Uh, for staying healthy and uh, I want to again share one more recent example my uh, neighborhood tailor who, to whom I go now recent I mean for my stitching and all that in Vidyanaga whenever I'm sit in the city so he had uh, well, I just called him one day and he said I've been having this fever for the last 10 days and I've been given some medication and somehow uh, I don't feel like eating my taste is gone and I'm having a cough and I feel breathless, almost all similar like COVID, COVID uh, conditions. So I told him, uh, if you want to, if you are having faith, then I will tell you something. And he said, okay, no problem. I'm willing to try. And so I said, just stop all kinds of medication. Don't eat anything uh, cooked. Just if you feel hungry, take, a, uh, take fruit juices and on the hour, take a lemon juice in, hot, in warm water every hour. And uh, he did that. And on the third day he was back in his shop. He said he started feeling hungry. He was feeling better. I said, you continue the fasting for a couple of days more, similar thing. Just the fruit juices will keep you healthy. There's no problem. You won't feel weak. And in fact, he said that I, I was not even feeling weak. He said, I was eating apples and I was just having some goa, whatever fruit I could get. And then having this lemon water every on the every uh, alternate day every hour and uh, then i told him you please ensure that you're sitting in the sun for one hour every day and he's been following that and i, I mean i talked to him even today he said i'm feeling so good and after the fourth or fifth day he started going back to his normal vegetarian diet and uh, another suggestion i told him is don't take milk tea because uh, it is better to take, I mean, again, this is my, my own experience. I also feel better after I stopped having milk with tea. Uh, curd gives probiotics. Uh, ghee is even better. Both are, if you want to take, anim uh, if you don't want to be a vegan, then this is a better option. Uh, if you want to take milk, take it directly as milk, but don't mix it with the tea. The chai is very, very bad because it causes a lot of acidity. And uh, the key to health or to all issues concerning disease is that it is the 
acidity in the stomach. It's your gut that creates the problems. If your gut is clean, if your gut is healthy, you will be healthy all over. A whole lot of things, including like Dr. Krishnamurti, whom I, was, I consult, uh, who's a naturopath. Uh, oh yeah, okay, Sandhya, I will, I will uh, just come to that. Let me just finish. So the gut health is most important. If you, and it is acidity, it is the so-called gastric problems that cause most of the issues. As I said, I had a lot of issues and once my gut was cleaned and cleared uh, through naturopathic system, which was giving anemas, I was on a fast for seven days. I was only taking neem water, uh, anema and uh, just lemon water and barley water. And all my gut issues, including ulcerative colitis got cleared within that one week. So uh, I had all kinds of issues. I had like hepatitis A and C, I, had, I was getting comatose and everything. And here again, I want to speak about when I was getting comatose, this was like when I was in college, I had a hepatitis attack, uh, I was getting into coma, but this allopathic doctor who was a gastroenterologist, you know, he would cure people just by his words. It's not true medication. He would just say, no, why are you having, this should not be like a hospital room. This should be like a resort, you know? So what I'm again saying, these are all the facets of things of health that first of all, doctors should give positive energy to the patient. They should not tell the patient you're going to die. I mean, you know, traditionally that's how doctors used to be. They would not scare the patient. They would just say, even if he was going to die, they would say, no, you're going to be fine. You know, that works. That works like a, uh, I mean, I don't know, how do you say? If you're telling constantly to somebody you're going to be dead very soon, definitely they will die. If you're going to tell someone you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. And the body actually works in to get itself better. How this happens now, that is all again, um, the energy, uh, you know, healing and all that, because I have learned Reiki also, and uh, I had been uh, practicing and at the energy level, because we're all part of the universal energy, it works. So just understand that, that first of all, we should stop being afraid. You know, it bothers me, it bothers me the way the media has been creating this fear regarding Corona. And like I said, my, uh, my tailor, he got well in just a few days. And Dr. Bishru Roy Choudhury, who's a nutritionist, has been saying, has been uh, giving this advice to people. You go on a fruit fast, go on a fruit diet for three days, four days, your, all your issues go. And, I'm te and my own experience, how did I learn about this lemon water? Because it is C vitamin, vitamin C. Once I was in a, in a tribal area, I got wet. I was traveling on a back of a motorbike for something like 200 kilometers and we got drenched, a terrible rain. You know, in East Kotabri, it just like, it pours. And by the time I came back, I was with 104 degree fever. And all these guys were like, ma'am, we'll take you to a doctor. I said, no, 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 no to a doctor. Just put me in the train. Let me go back to Hyderabad. And so literally somebody had to carry me to put me in the train. I came back to Hyderabad. I only did my fasting and I was constantly taking my lemon water. And on the second day or the third day, I was fine. Why does it work? Because vitamin C is the best medicine for a lot of issues. Of the vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E is also something that people are talking about. That's why sun exposure is vital to all of us and what's happening to a lot of people is that we are shutting ourselves in and even regarding this corona thing i'm so upset because they're forcing people to shut themselves inside the four walls i mean today i'm in hyderabad because i'm here for the zoom call but i am living on the farm and the amount of energy you feel when you're outdoors is tremendous so please take time to be outdoors. Please don't use air conditioning. It is very bad for your health. And eat uh, meals on the dot, on time, whenever you're feeling hungry. Listen to your body. If your body is saying, I don't feel like eating, don't eat. It knows best what is good for you. Okay, Sandhya, 
uh, I think you asked a question regarding Ayurveda and uh, naturopathy. I think more or less they're similar, but it's just that I'm not well versed with Ayurveda. I have not uh, gone into that because they do talk about the doshas and everything else. But in, it's the same thing. Ayurveda was more scientific in the sense that uh, not, I wouldn't say scientific, both are equally scientific. I find naturopathy is more simpler for people to understand and to follow. You know, it is not complicated. It is not like a rocket science. All they say is you follow your biological rhythms. You follow these do's and don'ts, which are which are uh, based on the natural world. You follow the circadian rhythms. You get your proper sleep and listen to your body, do your detox and it's fine. Now in Ayurveda also, they use the, uh, they use the Panchakarma treatment, which is again a method of detoxing. So uh, in, in that way, both the systems talk about uh, detoxifying. In fact, if you look at it, even homeopathy talks about detoxifying. They work with natural materials. But my concern is, uh, like what I feel is, that the best thing is to not use any kind of medication, if we can avoid it. Maybe homeopathy, when you require it, and in emergency situation, Maybe you want to use a paracetamol if you feel that. But uh, the fevers are actually a body's way to heal itself. We should understand that. We need to understand that fever, the body has risen the temperature so that the microbes or whatever that is there, that can be killed. You know, we all know that microbes don't survive in high temperatures. So if you're trying to reduce the temperature, then you're actually working against the body's mechanism to heal itself. So, uh, Sandhya, I may not be able to answer your question because, as I said, my understanding of Ayurveda is not complete or not even 10%. Uh, but definitely, yoga is something, again, that uh, naturopaths have adopted into India. And uh, here, again, I want to talk about, again, another experiment which I did on myself. Uh, that uh, 10 years or 12 years ago, I was diag I had... Uh, Okay, thank you, Shandhya. So 10 years ago, I had uh, been, uh, not 10, 12 years back, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, okay? Now, for two years, I was, I didn't want to take the medication, but because everybody scares you and says, oh, you have to take this, like it's like a lifetime drug, I took it. Uh, but one yoga teacher uh, in 2010 told me that these drugs can cause a lot of um, side effects in the long run, a lot of problems. So the next day I stopped. This was in April 2010. Until date, I have not taken my thyroid medication. Hi, Priya. Uh, I have not taken my thyroid medication. I, instead, I started practicing the yoga asanas, which are meant for, uh, you know, which are specific for thyroid. And I found a lot of uh, this thing. And uh, yes, my TSH values were around 20, 17, like that. Initially, it was shot up to 35, then it came down around 15, 17. But what I noticed was whenever my emotional situations uh, status was not good, my thyroid was going up. So what, do I, what I had to do was to see how I would stay emotionally stable. Okay. Now, uh, three years ago or four years ago, accidentally again, like somewhere in 2016, I came across uh, yoga mudras, you know, uh, the mudras, hasta mudras, which are used in, you know, hands. You just use your fingers because the fingers, uh, the hand also has all the five elements. And believe me, you, I, I was practicing this mudra for thyroid, which was called the Surya mudra. I've been practicing for the last uh, three years. And all, whatever little other issues that I've had with thyroid, they were all gone. So it is a mix. If people can learn how to stay healthy by uh, learning these simple natural, naturopathic treatment methods, which are like maybe a cold pack, a hot pack, or, you know, just a fasting. A fasting is amazing. The way it heals you is amazing. You're not well, just fast. Just fast, take a lot of fruit juices if you will not feel tired and you see it works amazingly. And then there are a lot of books on mudras. I would recommend the first book that I came across, which is very simple and easy to follow, is this Osho Siddhartha, the, you know, the Osho um, uh, Rajneesh uh, uh, disciple. They published this book called Osho Siddhartha's Book of Mudras. 
uh, it is in english it is very simple to and easy to follow just keep practicing keep practicing and you will see that health is really in your hands you don't really have to go to any kind of doctors ever ma'am uh, i would just like to pause over here to invite nalini ma'am co-founder of our sacred space who would like to ask you a few questions sure ma'am nalini ma'am please go ahead is this is this some uh, uh, some guidance you can give us with regard to exactly how we should fast um nalini uh, ma'am it is very simple that is uh, like today like i've been having a toothache for a long time so i decided let me see if i can fast so today in fact i'm fasting uh, so you start in the day if you can't do like lot of fasting like this ekadashi fasting is supposed to be again very good see every religion included fasting let's understand why the fasting was there especially in india we had it as part of a ritual but it was meant for your uh, this thing one thing that we can do is if we can fast at least one day in 15 day, once in 15 days it's wonderful that's what they in fact i've been reading about this that the ekadashi fasting is supposed to be more beneficial but otherwise also there are people who fast once in a week like the day you're fasting if you can't just stay only on water then definitely take uh, lemon water like today i was taking lemon water or you can take uh, fruit juices or you can even do just a fruit fasting like eating three meals of fruit today that also works that works so initially you may not be able to do like complete fasting it may be difficult so you can do that you can do for one day you can do for two days you can do for three days i have fasted for seven days also when i was in the naturopathy uh, space and especially during times when i'm really sick like as i said when i had this diarrhea or the viral fever or whatever i would fast until i got well but take lot of fruits or fruit juices at that time without sugar no sugar please sugar is very bad for health so if you can avoid sugars and take uh, fruits or just warm water with lemon or normal sada pani with lemon water that gives you the energy and then there are people who may want to i mean better to avoid the grains but there are people who take uh, barley water also barley is also an excellent detoxifying uh, uh, agent it uh, detoxifies your liver and kidneys very well and people who have kidney problems and liver issues i don't know if you're aware when people get jaundice they're given uh, this uh, barley water a lot it detoxifies the liver and kidneys so it's as simple as that just follow your body if you feel too weak too tired you can't do it do it for 12 hours and eat a sada meal in the evening or have a ragi ambali in the night or in the morning whenever you feel like are you suggesting that we give up sugar totally it is better to avoid see i also don't give up sugar because sometimes you want to feel like eating something all i feel is we need to moderate everything uh, you know and um, Uh, sugars definitely as i said i do take a little bit of sugar with my uh, as a, nowadays i'm not taking the milk chai so i'm taking a, a little bit of black tea uh, i mean you know i add a very little bit of the chai ka patta and uh, put ginger and tulsi this is my daily tea i boil ginger tulsi in water and put a teeny weeny bit of the uh, tea and then add lemon to it and then either i add uh, jaggery powder you can try you can have jaggery powder that's okay that's better than the white sugar you know this refined stuff is very bad whether it is uh, all things white they say in naturopathy that is uh, refined sugars refined maida you know the maida is very bad all bakery products in fact uh, even homeopathy also they say avoid maida and all these bakery products one homeopathic doctor who treated me for my sinus issue way back when i was in school uh, he also gave me a whole list of things that i should not and i remember now he used to tell me no chocolates no uh, sugar and not sugars this uh, maida and all that maida is extremely bad please don't eat bread even if it's whole grain it's better to avoid breads uh our uh, in fact i started eating oats ka aata ka what do you call this um, rotis they are much better much more tasty 
and more healthy compared to wheat. Uh, our regular atta rotis are fine, but don't try and eat these uh, maida wala stuff. It is very bad. Sugar, a less of salt. Uh, and uh, regarding salt also, they're forcing everybody to take this iodized salt. Uh, and that is a problem as well. I managed to get this rock salt from, uh, you know, in my near my village, we have these uh, weekly shanties in the neighboring village. So I managed to get the normal rock salt, sea salt. I bought a, like a big bag of it. I keep it with me. I grind it and I just use that. So uh, of course, naturally people say, eat as little salt as possible. But I know we all have a little bit. I mean, we also want to live our lives. No? So I feel that do the moderation and uh, doing fasting once in a while. Definitely walking is one of the best exercises. And if you can't do yoga, at least do pranayam uh, if you're in a city con situation. I mean, because I'm always working on the farm, I'm getting all my pranayam and uh, exercise, whatever, everything I'm getting. If you don't have that kind of a lifestyle, definitely yoga is excellent. I think it, the way uh, things change internally is amazing with yoga. Even if you can do just two or three asanas every day, do practice yoga, do a little bit of pranayam. You know, the thing I feel is nothing should become stressful. Uh, there are people who get stressed out. Oh, I have to do like 45 minutes yoga. Even I used to be in that situation. Then I realized, okay, let me do whatever I feel like. If I feel like two, two, three asanas, but once you start yoga, you know, it becomes like a, a habit for you. You would want to do it every day because you start feeling so good. So good. Uh, so I definitely think even if you can do a 10 to 15 minutes yoga every day, please do that. Or if you can walk a few one or two kilometers in fresh air outside is better. Treadmill and all that. I mean, you're not getting the benefit of real walking. So I don't, I don't recommend that. So sugars, uh, Nalini ma'am, as I said, uh, if you want to take your sweet stuff, uh, try to switch to jaggery. You get the black jaggery, not the white one. Again, that's, uh, they used a lot of chemicals in that. And while we're speaking about food, the core reason why most of us are falling ill nowadays, and as I said, the acidity and the gut problems are coming because of this, again, the polished rice, the white rice that we're eating, and the chemical food. The chemical food is causing all the issues in our... Um, in you had suggested eating raw uh, vegetables. Yeah. But not everyone has access to organic, so is it okay to eat um, raw, non-organic vegetables? Uh, I, uh, well, I am not qualified to talk about that, but I think because see, I'm getting raw, raw organic vegetables now, even fruits now, but then we did that even earlier. It helped. It helped. Uh, so fruits anyway, we don't, we, we don't have an option, uh, but uh, vegetables I'm suggesting, why don't we all have a little garden? I mean, even in pots, you can grow a few vegetables of your choice. Uh, if you can't eat raw vegetables, uh, then uh, just eat fruits in the evening. I mean, I don't get raw vegetables. I can't eat, uh, I grow things like karela and all on my farm. I don't have all these fancy ones like carrots and we, whatever, cucumber and all that. So I'm, instead of that, I eat a fruit. Eating fruits is the best. Um, if you can have a guava or uh, these are all our local fruits, I'm sure a lot of people can have access to them. Uh, I think uh, gen in general, the awareness is quite high. Uh, you may be able to get at least carbide free fruits. You can insist on that. That's something we all need to try, put in a little bit of effort for that. You had said that it is not necessary to bring down the fever, but there's always a fear that the person will go into, you know, get fits if they don't. Uh... No, see, if it is like, see, what I'm saying, Nalini, ma'am, the thing is, you have to look at the person's, uh, this thing, like, I even had one or four temperatures, as I said, that was very rare, but I did have that. First thing is, we should stop being afraid. Stop being afraid of anything that might happen, you know, uh, the people around you will start scaring you, that, oh, something might happen to you. 
that you may get fits. So the thing to reduce the fever in those times is they use the cold packs. You know, we always used to use cold compress on the on the forehead. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also recommend uh, on the stomach because uh, the stomach where the gut, where the all the churning is happening, the cold packs have a uh, very, uh, they have an amazing impact. In fact, cold packs are used even in cases of uh, cysts in ut uterus and ovaries. Cold pack is an mm -hmm. uh, amazing thing and anybody can do that. When I'm traveling, I always carry a small hand towel, a couple of them. So if I'm feeling ill or sick, I immediately first thing I do is I put a cold pack on my tummy and my head if I have a fever. If I'm not, then that's, uh, that's fine. So the cold compress also brings down the, the fever so you don't have this fits. Recently, uh, somebody i don't know some girl contacted me and uh, i suggested the same to her and the fever did come to come down quite uh, quite soon but if you feel the need definitely take a paracetamol take a mild paracetamol but uh, there are uh, even medicines in homeopathy for fevers and stuff like that which i'm not aware of i think uh, you can find them uh, take them if you need you see uh, that all i'm saying is Paracetamol may be all right to take a little bit to, if you feel that it is too high. One not two is okay. It's not a thing to be worried about. I, I have faced, as I said, I had very high viral fever. I came back. First thing what makes the biggest difference in health is our own inner energy. If you say, yes, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get over this. You will definitely get over this, no matter what condition you are in. So that is something I want to emphasize. And uh, I feel, again, as I said, you know, the corona cases have started increasing after they started the stupid propaganda everywhere, scaring everybody. Every phone you lift, you are hearing about corona. And it's so, so bothersome. You know, you're psyching people into thinking that uh, some big thing is happening and you're all going to die. People are not dying. It's just like maybe a less than 1% and those who are already having issues like diabetes and everything else. And let me tell you, in naturopathy hospitals, in Hyderabad, in Amirpet, they have cured people with brain tumor, with, uh, with, with, with a tumor in the brain. And uh, Dr. Krishnamurti recently told me, without any medication, nothing at all. And there was this lady who had given birth and she had a, a blood clot in her brain. And they cured her. They cured her. She got well. And I have, with my own eyes, I have seen patients who were paralyzed. But paralysis also, in naturopathy, I can tell you, I'll give you a guarantee that you will walk out in all your limbs and everything. I've seen such patients myself. When I used to go for my regular detox, I had seen such patients uh, within a couple of weeks to months, couple of months, two to three months, even recently, I've seen one lady. The, uh, the critical thing is, uh, if, you, if anybody ever gets paralyzed, uh, within the first few weeks, at least if they start the naturopathic treatments, they will get well. This I can say with confidence because I've seen such patients myself. And uh, that's what I said. The body has the capacity. I wanted to make a documentary called Where the Body is the Doctor. We have stopped listening to our bodies. And I think we should do that. I think we should do that. Anything for arthritis? I think uh, that's what I said, Nalini. The thing is, one, you start changing the lifestyle, the food habits, everything. And slowly your body will start responding. Now, a whole lot of these diseases or whatever your conditions, I would rather call that conditions, have developed over a long period of time. And like I said, I was doing this Surya Mudra. It took me two to three years. And now my thyroid has come to normal. So we need to be patient because a whole lot of, like, see, for me, the thyroid condition must have been psychosomatic because though I was following all my lifestyle things, my brain was too emotional or I was too, uh, I used to be very short tempered. So all these things must have added to my thyroid condition. So once I started practicing these mudras and let me, even for arthritis, there are mudras. Please practice them. Uh, I mean, right now I can't think of it. Uh, but if you practice the mudras, you do your lifestyle, 
uh, and start the positive thinking. In fact, I would tell people, you have a condition, just start writing on a piece of paper every day on a book, you keep a book and say, I'm absolutely, a, I'm a healthy person. Whatever condition you say, like uh, if you say, uh, my thyroid is getting normal or my arthritis is absolutely cured. I'm, I'm totally healthy. I'm totally healthy. Keep writing that every day. And believe me, you, how it works is amazing. How your body reacts to that is amazing. Because for us to consciously think that, you know, thinking is difficult. We can't do that. We can't practice positive thinking. So the simplest way is to start writing. Writing on a book, keep a book. And keep writing all these positive affirmations every day and your But the uh, book which I followed was, um, there was Dr. Bhakru, again, somebody like me who learned naturopathy uh, through practice. Uh, he has written a book on nature cure. In fact, uh, the first nature, nature cure book that I came across was written by Mahatma Gandhi. It's a very, very small book called Key to Health and Book on Nature Cure. They cost something like five or 10 bucks. Uh, I read them first uh, Incidentally, I read them first, around 97, 98. And uh, a year later, I actually chanced upon going to uh, a naturopathy hospital. That is Amir Pate Hospital in Hyderabad, where I got cured of all my gut issues. Um, yeah, and uh, um, I'll let me, I think Bhakru's book on naturopathy, uh, you can even find lots of books on uh, Thing, but it is not rocket science, Sandhya. It is very simple, very, very simple. Just learn the basic principles of naturopathy. Maybe I'll write a note on this. I have written some uh, this thing. Uh, and then follow them and you'll be fine. So follow few things. I would definitely recommend not having chai with milk. Milk tea is really, after I stopped that, I found a tremendous difference. Uh, Avoid uh, things like maida and uh, sugar. Maybe you take a little bit if you want to have with your tea or something. Take jaggery instead of sugar and uh, avoid animal foods. If maybe, maybe space them out, maybe once a month, once in 15 days, if you like. If you like an intermittent fruit diet, maybe just have a rug have the benefits of the fasting so that's one thing and uh, eating before seven o'clock is a cardinal rule please follow that it will make a world of difference to you get in the sun sit out in the sun uh, get your sweat out it is important so for arthritis naliniji i will i will uh, talk to you later but if you can follow the uh, lifestyles um except fasting yeah yeah no fasting is something which is very 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 essential and that is the reason why you see every religion uh, on the planet has in included fasting especially especially in our uh, indian traditions fasting was a part of life part of every uh, every ritual and the reason especially like in the kartik mass and everything maybe because the universal energies are in i mean you know we are all connected to the universe to the planets to everything else so i think you know uh, the way the the sun is move the sun's movements and all that are happening at that time maybe fasting in those days is extra beneficial for the body so uh, and summer months are the easiest to do fasting because you don't feel that hungry. You want to go on drinking a lot of stuff. So you can take a lot of, uh, lot of fruit juices, liquids, do a fasting. It's the best. Uh, it's the easiest thing to do. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a simplest solution to all issues. 
as I said again, our Sanskrit saying was there, Lankanam Paramaushadam, that is fasting is the best medicine. Our elders said that to us. Is it okay to combine raw food and cooked food or should you stick no, only what, to what, what What they say is that it is best to not mix both. You know, if you are eating a salad, then maybe just eat a salad. Or if you do have to mix, then uh, eat the raw food first. Eat the raw food first and then the, followed by the cooked food. So have the salads first and then you can have your normal meal. And uh, our normal sada vegetarian khana is very, it's, it's, it's actually holistic food. It is good. You are having your, just as I said, avoid uh, wheat products as much as possible. But if you're eating wheat, then eat the atawala roti. Uh, you, you can even try uh, oats ka atta. Um, you know, there is this uh, place in Begampet called Deccan Development Society. They've been working on millets for a long time. And here's something I wanted to say, like what I do nowadays is uh, we have a breakfast with me, millets and lunch is uh, brown rice with vegetables and dal or whatever, the normal stuff. And evening uh, is mostly fruits. Today, of course, I've been fasting. So uh, those are the things that, uh, that are simple things that we can do. Thank you so much. I wish I wish it would never, never end. It's such a beautiful session. You're so interesting and you're so inspiring. I, Thank you. I just Thank wish we could hold on to you forever and ever. It's been a wonderful session. And before yeah. we leave, um, there's one small story I'd like to share with you. Sure, in, sure. In, um, in 2004, I, uh, 2004 Thank or you, I yeah. did a uh, hypnotherapy course and mm. I was partnered with a lady who had uh, cancer mm. and uh, we were all asked to speak about what inspired us to, you know, take the course. So mm -hmm. she said that um, she was highly motivated to live because she had a three month old son. She was uh, diagnosed with cancer of the uh, uterus, I think. And she went for something for three weeks of this thing called guided imagery. Mm -hmm. And she said just, and she was slated for surgery. And just before the surgery, they did another x-ray or a scan or whatever those things are. And they found that the cancer had actually reversed. Exactly. So, what I was saying about positive thoughts, the thoughts and how they affect your, your bodies. And I want to add this, Dr. B.M. Hegde, you know, the famous, uh, uh, he was a vice chancellor for Manipal. He's a cardiologist. Uh, right now, he's in his late 80s or early 90s. I don't know how old he is. In fact, he has been talking. He's a cardiologist and he tells people, don't go for stents, don't go for bypass. You don't need all of that. Just take coconut oil and keep a positive mind. And what he says is your disease starts the day you start testing. You know, my friend who is a naturopath, she also says, you're feeling fine, no? So why do you want to go and get a thyroid tested also? So it's been ages since I've not gone for a test not bothered about what the numbers are. I'm feeling fine. So why should I care what the numbers are? And in fact, Dr. Hegde talks about regarding blood pressure. He says that Gandhiji used to have a BP, his higher BP used to be 200. And he never bothered about it. And his, uh, uh, his uh, doctor used to be very worried about him. And you know how he lived his life, no? So uh, what Dr. Hegde says is, that uh, blood pressure also is like, it is fluctuating. It can't be constant. You know, the problem with allopathy is everything has to be in black and white. It has to be between this to this. But that doesn't happen because our emotions also impact the blood pressure, uh, whether we have walked or not, whether we have climbed the stairs, anything. It's not just blood pressure, everything. So these are all like ups and downs. And they, like my, I'm telling you about my mom, they told her, you have a high BP. So she was taking this medication for so long, like almost 10, 15 years. And two years ago, Dr. Krishnamurti just said, no, you don't need a BP tablet, just stop it. And believe me, she's not been taking that. The problem was at that point when they tested, there was a high BP. But that doesn't mean that she needs to be on the medication forever. And in fact, these medications are so bad, so bad because... Because of that, she has a tinnitus problem. There's a constant noise in her ears. In fact, the ENT doctor we went uh, recently, the first thing he asked him, and he's a mainstream allopathic guy, right? The first thing he asked my mom was, 
uh, were you taking either cholesterol drugs or uh, blood, blood pressure drugs? Because both of these cause these problems, including uh, dementia. Oh my so, God. Yes, even Alzheimer's. The, all these issues which are face, being faced by the elderly, they are linked to the drugs or the long-term effects. And I have seen, uh, I was so fortunate that lady, whoever, that yoga teacher who told me not to take my thyroid medication, I, God bless her wherever she is, uh, I have seen people who have taken thyroid medication for a long time having a lot of other issues, a lot of problems afterwards, uh, including an increase in the thyroid TSH levels also, including the increase in TSH levels, despite taking the so-called, you know, this medita medications and all. So all these, especially these hormonal medicines like, uh, like this uh, diabetes uh, and the thyroid, all these are known to cause a lot of damage in the long run. And even diabetes is curable. A uh, lot of naturopaths, I'm not qualified to talk about that, but there have been naturopathy doctors who cured people uh, simply. Uh, so especially if you're on borderline, please don't take medication. Please don't take any medication, especially these diabetic drugs. They can cause a lot of problems. I don't know, I'm saying this openly. I'm not qualified to be a doctor, but I have known, heard, I mean, I've seen these things happen. So um, there are ways, ways in which. So including another thing, including millets in our diet is again, they're more nutritional. They're very high in calcium. They're very rich in, like ragi is very rich in calcium. I would recommend every lady to take that because we all have these calcium issues. Uh, and uh, so taking a ragi ambali every day, we can make a delicious drink with jaggery and uh, you know roasted peanut powder. It's very delicious. You have a ragi every day uh, in and uh, proteins. So bajra is very high in protein, and jawar is very good in general for general health. So take all these stuff. You know, make a mixed diet. The problem is again, as I said, like the biodiversity is good for the health of the plants. Having a a diverse diet is very much necessary for our bodies. Um, uh, I would also like you to share where people can find you for your uh, work in the handloom industry and uh, where they can see your documentaries. Uh, well, my documentaries are there. You just have to type Saraswati Kavula uh, channel on YouTube and you'll find all my documentaries there. And incidentally, my latest, uh, the documentary I made in 2018 was about naturopathy. All these case studies that I talked about, uh, the cancer patients and all, you can find there. It's a short documentary of about 35 minutes. And uh, my recent documentary has been about vaccination. Because until a few years ago, even I felt that uh, we all needed vaccines. That's why we are healthy. But now my research and my understanding has come across that it was because of the vaccines that a whole lot of chronic issues are, have cropped up in the humanity. Uh, and the reason for uh, a lot of these uh, disappearance of diseases was not because of vaccines, but because of the improved sanitation, improved nutrition. So, uh, I mean, I want to give this example. People say everybody's going to fall sick. Now, I've been bitten by so many people. You were all bitten by mosquitoes. But everybody doesn't get a malaria, only a few do. So we need to start looking at where is the disease coming from? It's, is it coming from inside or outside? And uh, as they say, oh, there's trillions and trillions of bacteria and everything lying inside our bodies, everywhere. Our body consists of bacteria and fungi, and whatever, all, all kinds of stuff. So we're living. And in fact, they say polio is an enterovirus. It is something that is inside your stomach. And the UNO, uh, not the WHO, also says that polio is caused because sewage water is getting mixed with food and uh, with drinking water. So what are you supposed to do? Like Dr. Azad, who is a pediatrician in Punjab, he says, the commonsensical thing to do is to ensure that your sanitation uh, and your water, drinking water is all clean, is good. Ensure good sanitation, good hygiene. But instead of that, you're putting a polio vaccine into every person. And nowadays you're getting like, I don't know, the doses are like enormous. Amitabh Bachchan goes on uh, saying, take it every other day. 
And the result is that because of the vaccine, now there is more polio and a much more dangerous polio that is being affected in, in our children and adults. And uh, the polio vaccine has been contaminated by uh, the simian virus, 40, SV40 virus. Uh, and there are a lot of issues with, with regard to that. That's a long story. Uh, you can watch my documentary called Decode Vaccines. It's in two parts. It's a little long because the issue is also equally complicated and complex. Uh, so do take time to watch the two documentaries, Decode Vaccine Part 1, Part 2. It is there on my channel. Uh, it's all free for everybody. Please share it. Because we are all being taken for a ride. We are being taken for a ride. Staying healthy is definitely not rocket science. It is very simple. We all can manage to stay healthy without resort to, you know, we are selling out our properties in order to stay healthy or because of these treatments that they are giving in these big corporate hospitals. People are becoming, I mean, I see in the villages, people are selling their land. Farmers, they can't afford these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, uh, med uh, treatments, which are so expensive. So um, I don't know. I think you asked me about handloom. Yeah. Another thing I want to say, if you want to stay healthy, please wear handloom fabrics. Handwoven fabrics, they breathe. They give you, um, they, they allow the sweat to be absorbed and they breathe, your skin breathes. So you're going to be healthy. So that's one thing. And regarding my handloom work, I mean, it's not much. I just organize a, a marketing uh, platform for the weavers, which I've been doing both at our sacred space and in our meat pit at Nagarjuna Nagar Community Hall. Unfortunately, due to this lockdown, we've not been able to organize the exhibitions. Uh, but there is a Facebook page called Chenetha Santa, the handloom weavers market. Uh, you will find all the details over there. Sure. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the positivity and the wealth of information you shared with us today. Uh, I will just take two minutes to inform everybody that we have another uh, tuning in session coming up next Saturday on uh, protection of children by Dr. Mamta Raghuri. So how to handle children, how to deal with uh, what they are going through, how to uh, tell if they are really, really young, how do you tell, explain COVID to them and why they cannot go out and play with friends and uh, other mental issues of within the family, how do you manage kids as a family. All of these points will be covered in the next lecture series. Please follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Our Sacred Space and you will find the registration link for it over there. Nalini, thank, you, you just like thank you, Nalini, ma'am. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.